Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today we're doing yet another edition of our bi-weekly wishlist or washout. If you're new to the channel or if you haven't seen the series before, what I do is every other Wednesday now go through all of the new makeup releases that I see on Instagram and I decide if I'm going to be adding anything to my wish list or if I think everything's a total washout. I keep all of these videos in a single playlist if you just want to binge watch and just go through all of them. I'll throw that up in the cards if you're interested, but let's go ahead and I'll scoot over <laughs> and we'll look at all of the new makeup releases. My chair is so noisy. I gotta get a new chair. It's also not good for my back. Like, I'm getting old. <laughs> my lower back hurts in this chair. A quick update before we start. I did order the ABH and Alyssa Edwards palette. I ordered it from Sephora, though I did see it at Ulta. I should have gotten it at Ulta. I'm trying to buy more things from Ulta than Sephora because Ulta has the better rewards. But with my order from Sephora, I was also able to get a mini of the new Too Faced Mascara, which I was kind of excited for but I didn't want to pay that much money for a mascara. So I was happy that with that palette, I was able to use a promo code and get that mascara for free. It's a mini. I can't wait to try it out. <laughs> it's been hyped up like nothing else. I also cannot wait to try out this palette. So let me know down below. Do you want to see like one look and a review, like a first impression, or do you want to wait a little bit and do three looks one palette, review, swatches, like I kind of normally do. Because I know for the most part, those videos, since they take longer, they get fewer views and no one really looks out for them. So I want to know, do you guys want to see a quicker video with one look and a, like a first impression of the palette, or do you want to see a full review? Let me know down below. I think I already talked about this palette. This is the Dominique Cosmetics Rustic Glam Palette, and I'm actually really interested in this, and I kind of want to pick it up. I almost bought this back when I bought the Alyssa Edwards palette, but I was like, eh, but maybe not. So this is currently, it's sold at Sephora, so it is on my loves list at Sephora. I don't know if I should pick it up. I'm like really debating on it. I'm going to do my usual thing and give it a week or two, and if I still want it, I'm going to get it. So also, same thing. Let me know for this palette. Do you want to see a full review? Do you want to see my first impressions? Let me know. I have to admit, guys, I'm like second guessing myself so bad about the Sunrise palette <laughs> from Natasha Denona. I talked, I mean, I need to do a whole video talking myself out of this palette now because at first I talked trash. I was like, I have these shades. I don't need this palette. Um, I do like the overall idea of the palette that Natasha Denona is doing less product and it's a cheaper price. It's 65 which is affordable compared to the rest of Natasha Denona. Like the Sunset, like the Sunset palette, this, this is was $129. Uh, I saved up for a while and I used a gift card and I got this. Uh, so the new palette being 65, half the product, half the price. So I like where the brand is going towards more affordability. I want to see a smaller palette like this in a different color story. But I'm kind of really tempted now to pick up the palette. So I need to, I might do a whole video talking myself out of the, the Sunrise palette because I kind of really want it now. And I've seen mixed reviews. I've seen some people love it and I've seen some people hate it. The last review that I watched was from Teresa is Dead. She did her review and it, it didn't really work that well for her. She said there were only like two shades that she really liked. And that kind of got me thinking like, oh, maybe I really don't want this palette. It just looks really pretty and I'm tempted by the price, but you know what? <sighs> that video might be coming out soon, <laughs> me talking myself out of that palette. I don't remember if I covered this before, but Tetris Day just passed. So I was looking at this again. I actually, so I really like this bar arcade. It's called Barcade. They have uh, a couple locations all around like the East Coast and they just opened one I think in uh, LA. Uh, but it's basically, they got a whole bunch of vintage arcade games, one of them being Tetris, of course. And this past weekend was the anniversary of Tetris. It was like the 35th anniversary of Tetris. And so they came out with a whole big event and I almost went, but I've been doing like errands and family events every weekend for the past two months. And I was just, I was out of it. I needed a break. So my boyfriend and I spent this whole weekend doing nothing, which was 
great. <laughs> it was awesome. So we didn't go to this event, but it got me thinking again about like this collaboration with between Tetris Official and Ipsy. And I was just so disappointed in it. Like they could have done so much more of this collab. Or why did they collab with Ipsy? They, I kind of, oh, could you have imagined like a, a Tetris and I don't know, like a Becca collab or a Tetris and who else would I think Tetris with? Uh, ABH already had a collab. I don't know. Like I feel like an actual makeup brand and not just Ipsy. Like, because I love Tetris <laughs> and I would have loved to buy something, but this just looks horrible. I don't want any of this. Okay, so I saw this collab and I was a bit confused because I've also never heard of this actual brand before. This was a collab with Disney for The Lion King coming up. And it's a collab with Lumines Cosmetics that I've never heard of. And Sir John, I guess that's the owner, I guess. Okay, so this collab, it looks... Like, really boring. It looks really boring. I, first, did this really need a collab? Like, I can kind of understand, like... How, how do I put this? I can kind of understand other brands doing collabs for actual movies where people are maybe actually wearing the makeup. Or makeup inspired by the movies. But this was A, an animated movie, and B, this whole movie is CG. This, like, I'm trying to say that this is clearly just a money grab. Very clearly. With a brand that I've never even really heard of. And not only does the palette look boring as hell, warm neutrals for the majority of it, the only other brand, the only colors are the blue and the green up top. And it looks like, I don't like the texture of these. I, I don't even know. And there's like a lipstick, there's a face palette, like, ugh. I, I don't understand this. Why is this a thing? They have a, a kingdom sculpting palette, a can't wait to be queen eyeshadow palette, be brave matte lipsticks, be prepared to liquid lipsticks. Okay, I gotta say, I, I love the song, be prepared. I kind of want those liquid lipsticks, but no, this, this isn't needed. The legacy tinted lip balms and the circle of life, high, none of this was needed. <laughs> oh, I can't get over this. Oh my God. This is kind of ridiculous, and by kind of, I mean completely. Benefit just came out with a new powder foundation. This is the Hello Happy Velvet Powder Foundation. I tried, like, a deluxe size sample of the liquid foundation, and it did not work for me. I'm really glad I got, like, that mini. It, it looked horrible on me. It did not work. I think I did that in my Bite Size Review series, just because it was a little sample. Um, I'm not really needing any powder foundations or powder. I've got plenty that I need to actually work through. And I think the packaging just looks hella bulky on these for just a little powder. Yeah, not interested. Morphe came out with a palette and a brush set for Pride, which I'm trying to remember who said this. I think it was Smoky Glow in her last video said, why would you come out with a huge colorful palette right after the James Charles palette? Because that is basically a giant colorful palette. I don't want to buy this. I know the Morphe brushes that come in brush sets are absolute garbage. And the ones that come individually are hit or miss. So I would not touch that brush set with a 10-foot pole. But the palette itself, eh. Eh. Uh, one, I don't need a rainbow palette. I need to keep telling myself that. And two, uh, looking at the textures here, it looks like the majority of it is matte with like run, run one row of shimmers and then a couple of random shimmers thrown in it just why i actually really want to try this foundation out this is a new foundation from urban decay and this is called the stay naked foundation it comes in 50 shades it's 39 dollars, and i can't tell if this is supposed to be okay so it is a weightless liquid foundation up to 24 hour wear i can't tell if this is supposed to be matte if it's supposed to be luminous i don't i don't know but I'm interested, kinda really wanna try it out. But it would have to be like a matte foundation. Like we're getting into summer, it is hot as hell outside and I need something that's gonna stay matte and stay on my face through a whole day. Milani is coming out with two new palettes and while I was actually really excited about their eyeshadow palette formula, 
neither of these color stories are calling to me. They're majority, if not all, shimmer. And I don't know what I'm going to do with these palettes. Like, <laughs> I don't know what I would do with these, but yeah. I've tried out one of their new palettes and the formula was bomb. Like, it was really good. But these color stories just look like all over the place. Okay, so Jeffree Star released what his new summer collection is going to look like. And while I will say I was ultimately originally really tempted by one of the palettes, I'm no longer buying from Jeffree Star. So if you missed that last video I put out, I'll throw it up in the cards, which is all about my reflection on toxic people in the beauty community and how I don't really want to support that anymore. So I'm not going to buy any more Jeffree Star Cosmetics products. But I will say the original Jawbreaker palette, the Giant palette, I saw that and I actually originally really wanted it. I even tweeted about really wanting it before I put that video out. I don't need this. It's a jumble of colors. There's no real story to it. It's just like color, 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 color for the sake of having color. And it's a big palette. And if there's anything that I know about me, it's that I don't reach for big palettes. So why would I want this palette? The small palette looks like a bleh mess. Like it doesn't, the small palette doesn't look like a summer palette. Let's uh, and I'm like a bit like confused as to why people get excited for different colors of the same product like his mirrors I will admit I did buy a mirror like last year because I really needed a hand mirror and I didn't have one so I thought you know what why not but he's like beauty blender where like they come out with a new color for a beauty blender and everyone's like oh my god it's this new thing it's great it's not <laughs> it's just a color he does the same thing he comes out with new colors of mirrors every single release he comes out with just so no I don't need this I'm not going to buy this I'm not gonna buy anything else from Jeffree Star including the upcoming whatever finally collab comes out between him and Shane which I gotta admit like it's actually been kind of annoying seeing like Shane act on social media about how he's only trying to get into the beauty community because he's gonna eventually be selling something and you can clearly see that Apparently this is round three. <laughs> when did this happen? This is round three of a collab between Khloe Kardashian and Kylie Cosmetics and the palette looks boring as hell. And there's like lipsticks and I guess there's a face palette. What's okay, there's a highlighter, there's a lipstick. This is this is boring. You know what, if you had shown me these products, I would have already said that they were already part of her collection and then that I passed them over. I haven't, I don't think I've bought anything from Kylie Cosmetics since the, uh, the Halloween palette, which was okay, but not like spectacular, you know? The only thing that's still tempting me from Kylie Cosmetics is the peach extended palette because it's a peach palette that actually has peach tones in it. And I still want that palette. I think I might pick that up. I might pick that up in another one of the concealers because those concealers are actually really good. And I panned two of them and I kind of really want another one. So I'm debating whether or not to pick up another concealer. And if I do, I would get that peach palette because that's the only thing tempting me from her. And that's an old palette. So I see on Trend Mood that there are some new hot lips, lipsticks coming out from Charlotte Tilbury. I did a whole video on bullet lipsticks. I'm not the biggest fan of bullet lipsticks, but there are quite a few that I actually enjoy. I'll throw that up in the cards if you want to see it. Charlotte Tilbury was a brand that I wanted to try out a while ago just to try it. I ended up never really buying anything because I still kept getting sticker shock. I was like, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's a lot of money. Um, but after watching Raw Beauty Christie's video on the Jaclyn Cosmetics lipstick, she basically compared like Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks to hers kind of got me interested in Charlotte Tilbury again, <laughs> if I'm being honest, because those lipsticks look really nice. I don't need bullet lipsticks. I, I want minis. I want mini lipsticks or mini anything from Charlotte Tilbury, so I can just try it out. Like, I'm still looking at things and getting sticker shock, but I'm uh, my interest is rekindled. So moving over to Indie Makeup Spotlight, this is a palette from Nomad Cosmetics that I, I haven't seen this really brand before and I haven't tried them out but I'm pretty interested and this is called the Tokyo Harajuku palette it's just a very pastel palette very spring very summer the packaging's adorable but it's $37 you're gonna have to pay shipping but I'm pretty interested I did go to Japan back when I was in high school and I spent like one day in Harajuku loved it. 
I'd love to go back. I would, I'm dying to go back to Japan, but I'm pretty interested in this palette. The only thing that's worrying me is that I see some shades in the bottom row that kind of look like pressed glitters. Not a huge fan of pressed glitters, but overall, aesthetically, this palette is calling me. Oh, this is a palette that I am like really into and I think I'm going to pick it up. But it's over 50 bucks. It's okay. So this is from Glaminatrix Cosmetics and it's called the Sandra Rose Palette. And a week ago it was available for pre-order. It looks like it's about $52. I think it's originally like an Australian owned beauty company. Uh, I don't know what the shipping is going to be like on that. And the palette's already over 50 bucks. Um, but they do say that $5 from each palette goes to the Starlight Children's Foundation of Australia. So they are putting some towards charity, which is incredible. But also just look at this palette. This is different. This is something I haven't really seen before. It's a good mixture of colors. It looks like a nice mixture of textures. I want this palette. <laughs> Oof. I'm going to follow that brand on uh, Instagram right now just to keep an eye on it. Oh, I want this palette. Yeah, I don't know if it's still available though because they still say it was available for pre-order a couple of days ago. So I'm not sure. That's the thing about indie brands. Like if you miss the pre-order or you they run out of palettes and they're just gone, then it's just like, oh, well, then that's it. So I'll keep my eye on it. I am pretty interested in it. Because I mean, I saw this in my Instagram feed and I was just like, what is this? I need it. So I'm pretty sure that this palette already sold out, which I am like heartbroken about. I wasn't interested in this palette since I already had the um, Affinity 2 palette uh, and that ended up irritating my eyes and it did not work for me. I couldn't use the palette. So I am sanitizing it and I'm sending it to a friend of mine. But because of that, I didn't look into this palette and now this palette is sold out and oh my God want it. This is the Ace Beauté Oceanic palette and I think it's just gone. I have no idea when it's coming back in stock. I'm afraid I missed the boat on this one. Like I really want this palette now. But the, I originally didn't get it because I thought I was going to have the other Affinity palette but life. So I'm going to end today's video with this line from Physicians Formula. We're skipping back to, I guess, mainstream or at least drugstore brands. They are coming out with, they're turning their rosé all day products into like a whole line. It's going to be a whole rosé all day line. And I, I could have sworn I saw somewhere there was a setting spray in this line. And that got me interested. I really want to try out setting sprays. I love drugstore setting sprays and because they're so affordable and it's a product that you can go through pretty quickly and I, I always like finding good affordable options for that and if they came out with one in this line I could have sworn I saw a bottle somewhere I really can't find it now I might have I might have made it up but I would be hella interested in that but also they're coming out with a whole new line of like these fancy looking highlighters and they're called uh, rosé all day petal glow highlighters yeah and they're all shaped like roses and I really want to try one out because I did try out their um, their butter highlights and they're, most of them are a bit chunky and they didn't really work the best for me, but I really want to try this out. <laughs> so I, I might pick up one of those if I can find it in store. They do have a full rosé all day line including an eye cream, a cleanser, and a moisturizer. I don't think I'm going to try any of those. The only thing I would actually try other than the highlighter would be that setting spray. All right, guys. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down below if there's any new releases that I might have missed that you want me to react to in the comments. Thank you again for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.